On today's show, the race is on to form strategic coalitions in the race to dominate autonomous cars. Move over, Polaris Slingshot and Ariel Adam. There's a new kid on the block, from Camillo Pardo no less. And we show you the hottest new manufacturing technology in the automotive industry. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily, the show for enthusiasts of the automotive industry. Say, who's going to set the standards for autonomous cars? Whoever does could create a dominant position in what could become a massive new market. BMW hopes it has the right coalition by signing on Intel to make the chips and Mobileye to make the vision systems. And that is a very powerful combination. It's given BMW the confidence to announce it will have a fully autonomous car on the road by 2021. Now, the giant supplier Continental says it's working with American and European automakers to form a counter coalition to BMW. Continental has not yet named which automakers it's working with, but it does say it will work with Tesla now that Mobileye announced it's going to drop Tesla as a customer after its current contract runs out. No doubt the move by Continental is going to kick off a flurry of announcements of other suppliers and automakers joining together in the race to develop autonomous cars. Even though China gets so much attention for being the biggest car market in the world, the NAFTA region is right up there with it. And now Ward's Auto reports that Mexico just set another all-time sales record. Last month, 132,000 new cars and trucks were sold in Mexico, up 18% from a year ago. In fact, year-to-date, the Mexican market is also up 18%. The biggest automakers in Mexico are, number one, Nissan, followed by General Motors, and then Volkswagen Audi. Say, we've got a terrific AutoLine After Hours coming up later this afternoon with Justin Fishkin, the Chief Strategy Officer of Local Motors. It may be one of the best shows that we've ever done. And Local Motors has one of the most fascinating business plans we've ever seen. By the way, Camillo Pardo, the designer best known for doing the last generation of the Ford GT, designed a car that could be 3D printed by Local Motors. So far, they're calling it the 3E, a three-wheel, open-cockpit electric car. You know, at last year's MBS Automotive Conference, Justin Fishkin and Camillo shared the stage as each of them gave a presentation on future design. And it was right there on stage when they started talking about doing a deal together. So I strongly advise you to join Gary Vasilash and me later this afternoon to learn more about Local Motors on AutoLine After Hours. Mercedes tried to go upscale with the Maybach brand. It was a sales flop. But one thing you can say about Mercedes-Benz, those guys never give up. And more about that right after this. AutoLine Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, advanced materials that deliver better results. And by Lear, a global leader in automotive seating and electrical systems. New products are what the car business is all about. That's what brings customers into the showroom. So it's important to keep up with what automakers have up their sleeve. And here's the latest from Mercedes-Benz, which just teased out this sketch for a new Maybach coupe on its Facebook page. Like the image itself, the company didn't reveal much about the car, only that it will be a whopping six meters long, and that's nearly 20 feet. We don't know when Mercedes will take the wraps off this coupe, but judging on the timing of this tease, we should see it on the floor of the Paris Auto Show at the end of next month. A couple of years ago, IndyCar made a big deal about allowing Chevrolet and Honda to create their own unique aero kits for the race cars. That resulted in some wild-looking front ends with multiple winglets. But now IndyCar is going to drop them. Next year will be the last year that teams can use their own designs. Starting in 2018, teams will use only one aero kit that will be allowed by the series. So why the change? It's not just about cutting costs. Racer.com reports that it's an effort to attract another manufacturer to IndyCar. Other OEMs have showed interest in joining the series, 
but they don't want to spend millions of dollars to develop their own aero kits. You know, drivers really don't like these aero kits either. It's too easy for pieces to break off when there's the inevitable contact in the kind of wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing that is so common in IndyCar. Hey, we're going to show you the hottest new manufacturing technology being used in the automotive industry, and that's coming up next. Lear Connexus is the new application suite in vehicle connectivity designed to deliver over-the-air software updates and more from Lear Corporation's eSystems, leaders in power and data management. Automakers need to cut the weight of their cars to improve fuel economy and reduce emissions. One of the materials that they're turning to is ultra-high strength steel. That steel is so strong that you can use a thinner gauge and that cuts weight. But it's so strong it has to be softened up before it can be stamped. Otherwise, you'll break the dies. So stamping companies like Guest Stomp are using a new manufacturing method they call hot stamping. Here's how it works. They start with steel coils that get cut into sheets. Those are fed into a blanking press which trims them to the proper size. The blanks are moved by robots onto a conveyor line that feeds them into an oven. That heats up the blanks red hot almost instantly. Now that the blanks are hot and soft, they can be transferred into a press and stamped into the final part. Hot stamping is now being used to make A and B pillars and other structural components. And to us, this shows how creative the automotive industry can be when it comes to meeting fuel economy standards. You know, here at AutoLine Daily, we like to keep you up to speed on what's happening on all kinds of different things that you're probably not going to find anywhere else. And with that, we wrap up today's report. Thank you for watching.